Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here, and I know some of you have been anxiously awaiting this week's video. In last week's video, I kind of hinted that I got my coolest coin ever, and it's a bit of a mystery. Well, I also got some other really awesome relics that day, and it was a good one. Let's hop in. Well, back at a regular permission here, early 1800s spot. I just pulled a very beautiful little flower button. Sorry, I'm out of focus. It's very cloudy today. Oh, man, that is absolutely gorgeous. Teeny tiny, rang up about a 13 or 14 on the Equinox. It's going to clean up beautifully. All right, on to the next. <laughs> well, this was funny. I had a screaming 14 signal, four inches down, and I plugged it perfectly. It's gonna be, oh yeah, it's another escutcheon plate. It's like a couple of these out here before. This one's mangled and broken, but I wonder if it goes to the other piece I have. That'd be really cool. Awesome. A lot of non-ferrous targets out here for sure. I've already dug a bunch of like little pieces of brass and stuff, uh, but I didn't film it because it wasn't really much of anything. But that's very cool. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so I just got a solid 19 signal, about six inches down. It's actually more like four. It's either a coin or a button. And it's a button. All right. Beautiful. I don't think there's a back mark on here. If there is, it'd be pretty simplistic. Look at that nice shank, though. It's in great shape. Nothing on the front, but that's to be expected most of the time with flat buttons, so still a great target. Okay. Okay, well, I just got a pretty iffy signal about six to eight inches down in that hole. I plucked it out, and at first I thought it was a coin, but it's almost a little too thick. So I'm thinking it's a button without a sh What the heck? Oh, man, I've always wanted something that's counter stuff. That's so cool. It says J-H-H. I have no clue what that means. What the heck is this? What the heck is this? I, I don't know what that is. It's got to be some kind of coin, though, because of the way that it's stamped. That is way too cool. Oh, that was such a bucket lister for me. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this off real quick and get right back to you with what I think it might be. Okay. Okay, so I brushed this off, and I am no further to understanding what it is. It is it's too thick to be a coin, it feels like, but I don't know. And the back is just completely wiped. Well, I can't wait to figure out what this is. I'll certainly consult uh, the internet and some forums and see what on earth this is and uh, what that counter stamp might actually stand for. But that's an extremely exciting find for me. And it's a bucket list or checked off the list all day long. That is awesome. So that was my mystery coin that you just saw me film. And I still have no idea exactly what it is. Now, for those of you who don't know, counter-stamped coins were typically used to promote a business in town or just somebody stamped their name on it to have it remembered for whatever reason. I don't know. Counter-stamped coins are obviously not my specialty, which is why I've kind of gotten no place with this coin. The only things I know for sure are as follows. It weighs 4.1 grams. It is 18 millimeters in diameter, which is just under a small cent from the United States. A United States small scent is 19 millimeters. I researched and researched and researched to death what might actually line up in terms of the weight and the diameter of this coin because I thought maybe it was a foreign coin that had been smoothed over and then counter stamped to promote a business in town. Still no luck with that even after hours and hours and hours of research. Other people also researched this counter stamp and nobody can find it in any catalog. In fact, there was one gentleman online who searched, I think, about 25 to 30 catalogs trying to find that particular stamp, and none of them really fit the bill. With that said, though, there are plenty of counter stamps that aren't listed anywhere because some of them are very unique and some of them are very rare. For all I know, this could have been promoting a business in town um, and there could have only been 20 ever stamped, and that's why it never ended up in a catalog, because maybe it's the first one that was ever actually found. What's really curious about this coin, though, is, first of all, it's copper number one for 2020, and I say that because it beeps just like a copper. Let's check that out. So there's the coin. Here's the beep. Twenty 
27 to 28 all day long. Now, some of you who detect with the Equinox will also recognize that as a silver dime number. A little weird. Here's my theory. I believe that at some point in its life, this was a braided hair large scent. The reason I say that is because for those of you who detect and live in the Northeast or have the opportunity to dig braided hair large scents from the 1830s, you know without a shadow of a doubt that those are the highest ringing coppers out there. Just about. So because I was at a home built in 1830, that would make total sense for this to have been a braided hair large scent. In fact, it's quite thick. I don't think you're really going to be able to see that on camera. You'll have to take my word for it. But it's thick like a copper. It beeps like a copper. So that's number one for the year. And that is my mystery. I still don't know what's going on with it. If you have any ideas, please be sure to leave a comment. I really appreciate it. All right, back to the show. Well, it's just not a day of digging without one of these. <laughs> About eight inches down or so. Nice 22 signal and of course, we have a regular horse tack buckle here. Not surprised, the barn was very close to where we are. It's actually a pretty nice one. And it still moves just a little bit. Nice patina, a lot of the stuff that comes out of here has a pretty good patina to it. So that's really cool. All right, moving right along. It's official. I'm pretty sure Nicola's gonna kill me because she's not out here today. <laughs> this is her favorite thing to find. And the last one I found was like 20 feet that way. Do you see it? I got a little skeleton key. I do, I do, I do. Oh my gosh, look how cute it is. That is so wicked. Oh my God. And it was one of those no dadder screamer signals at 21, 22 six inches down oh my goodness let me brush this off i'll be right back to you that's fantastic and here it is this is too cool i absolutely love this this is one of the coolest skeleton keys i've ever seen and it's tiny as you can see it's only about an inch and a half long i'm suspecting this is probably for a jewelry box or something similar but whatever it's for i've never seen one like this and that is a huge daymaker, as if the counter-stamped coin or whatever that was isn't enough. Holy crap. I absolutely love it. Whew, all right. Gonna keep swinging. All right, I'm not convinced on this theory, but that key might actually have been part of a pendant that also included a heart padlock. This would date to the Victorian era, and I can throw up a couple of examples right now just to show you what it may have actually looked like. Now, the keys on these pendants are a little bit smaller than the one that I found, but it's very close, it's really ornate, and it fits the bill. So there is a possibility that that could be what it is. However, in my mind, I'm still kind of leaning towards a jewelry box or trinket box kind of key. All right, back to it. Okay, next target was just a kind of a very quiet 19. And of course I found another one of these. <laughs> another little horse tack buckle. This one is silver plated. I actually just found one exactly like this uh, a couple of months ago at the hunt where I found my Walking Liberty half dollar. That was awesome. So, cool. Okay, on to the next. Okay, I got a 19 signal about 8 inches down. That's where most of the stuff is falling. And I just pulled up, I can already see it, it's a harmonica reed. Very typical at 1800s homesteads. This one's rolled up. It's actually, it reminds me of the first one I ever found. Because it was rolled really strangely like that. You have to wonder what stepped on it or what the heck they were doing to make that happen. Um, I think that's it in a hole. I thought I saw something else, but no, just dirt. As you would find in a hole, you know, dirt. <laughs> So, okay, I'm going to give it a little bit longer. I don't want to be rude. don't want to be here too, too long. Um, so, we'll keep going for a little bit. Well, this is typical, and it's a good sign that the earth hasn't been moved too much. So, got a foot away. I got that other piece of harmonica reed. And I just pulled out another piece of the other half, because there would be two reeds on top of each other. And, uh, yeah. So that's a really good sign that the earth hasn't been moved too much back here because I know the property owner has uh, moved a lot of the dirt and shifted it around to landscape it the way he really wants. It's actually a really beautiful property. 
So I'm surprised he let, lets me do this. <laughs> but anyway, um, so very good sign with that. And it tells me a little bit of something about the field that I'm working in right now. So good signs. Well, everyone, it's time to hop into the wrap up. I really hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. And if you have, make sure you don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified of each new upload. Let's take a look at what we found. All right, guys, so hop it on into the wrap up here. Should be a pretty quick one. We've got our two horse tack buckles. This one still has a little bit of silver plating left. So that's always nice to find. This one does not, but it's still fairly nice. Really nice patina on that, so we're happy with that. And this is that first flower button that I found. I thought it would uh, translate a little better on camera in the gem capsule, that's why I'm showing it this way. Really beautiful, it still does have the intact shank, uh, but again, I wanted to show it to you this way so you could see it just a little bit better rather than my hands covering up half the design. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, so that other button we found, and it does have a back mark as you saw in the photos, it says gilt. And uh, that's probably very late 1700s to early 1800s. Again, nothing on the front. I did clean it a little bit more um, after those photos that were posted in the video. So here's that escutcheon piece. Not terribly exciting and not a very nice one, but always a very good sign to find those. Uh, same with the harmonica reeds, nothing too exciting there, but we did make out with some really cool finds. This skeleton key absolutely blew my mind. I love it. One of my new favorite relics, and I feel like I say that <laughs> every time I do a video, but it's true, this thing is just way too cool. And of course, our mystery bucket lister counter stamped coin. Still have no idea what it is. You can see how thick it is there. Nothing on the back, no shank mark, no nothing. It is definitely a copper coin. So that's copper number one for the year. I may never know exactly what this is, but either way, awesome find, awesome day. And of course, as always, we'll see you next week.